So, firstly, uh, thank you, Tony, for giving me opportunity to uh, interview you for my YouTube channel and podcast. You're welcome. You're welcome. I uh, I know what it's like to get people on the show, and so I'm I'm very happy to help, and uh, ho- hopefully, we'll help grow your show. So it's a great opportunity for me, and uh, you're the uh, topmost uh, influencer who came to my show for the first time. It's my honor to be with you. Welcome. I I don't know the name of your show, Sai, so but welcome. I'm very glad to be here, and I hope to give some wisdom and some guidance to your audience. So before that, I want to uh, introduce you to my audience. So. Uh, uh, the Tony uh, Durso show. So you are from US, and uh, you started this show six years back. I'm actually Italian. I was born in Italy, and I grew up in Chicago. So I have this Midwest accent. But most of my life, I've been in California. So uh, when when you when you started this show and what made you to start this? Sai, what made me start it is I was in corporate world, you could say, for about 32 years. And I left to open up my own lead generation company. And it went well, but there were major federal changes that brought my business all the way down to to zero four times in seven years you know what last year did the 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 madness of 2020 did to business it hurt businesses a lot well i had those type of changes in the lead generation business it just brought my business down to its knees and i got tired of it Sai. and i looked around for what could i control what can i do that it doesn't get hurt every time somebody issues a new protocol or a law or anything. And I found, and I kept hearing this word sigh about podcasts. And I thought, Oh, I'm Italian. I can do that. I can talk. So I started podcasting and so that I could control what I do and, and have more, the most control possible. If anyone in the audience podcasts, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, it's the it's the best way I have found that you can control what you do a, as much as possible because no matter you can podcast anywhere in the world it doesn't matter where you are you can podcast anywhere which is great and so no matter what happens whether there's a, there's a lockdown or the roads are closed or you can't fly out or no matter what goes on you can still podcast so I like that that I could control it so I started podcasting. So 18 million is a very big number. So what made uh, 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 you to do, uh, make it possible? To get my uh, to get my audience? Well, I didn't know anybody. I had zero downloads. I didn't know anybody in the industry. I, uh, it was a subject that I was new to, but I, you know, I knew about being an entrepreneur and I used the the knowledge that I had from my lead generation company side, because no matter what the social media does, the the basics are the basics. Even if they change their rules, there's still certain basics. And I understand a lot of those basics. So I use those basics of reaching out to people, of being able to engage to people that I knew from my lead generation days. I use those basics to promote my own show. And it just started taking off. And and I actually do that for a, a business now is I do podcast and blog, social media, and I, I help promote. I can promote anything because I understand enough of the basics. And that's really helped a lot. You, there's, there, I mean, we could do a whole class on just that question you asked. Right. There's there's content, there's knowledge, there's how to interview, how to get people. But. In terms of direct answer, how did I get and grow so fast? I used um, I used my social media. So I can see uh, you did uh, interviews uh, with uh, great influential people. 
so uh, what 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 is that thought made you to uh, tell about uh, their work to audience that's a great question sai i found that you and everybody listening you cannot read everybody's book listen to everybody's podcast take everybody's class go to everybody's webinar listen to everybody's speech you just can't do it it's impossible there's not enough time in one lifetime to 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 do that so i realized if i can curate and bring the top influencers top marketing top people in their category that i call elite entrepreneurs it's a it's a name i ter- i coined if i can bring them to people like you and your audience so that you can help grow your business you can start up you can learn about photography images social media you can learn about marketing leadership sales uh, uh, on a more uh, fast condensed uh, method that it would be very helpful and i was right it worked and uh, you know the fact that there's a lot of people listening to my shows shows that you know it's workable because you know you're out driving you're walking your dog you're exercising you're doing whatever you do it's not necessarily easy to go and read somebody's book or go to somebody's class or take somebody's course or whatever but the podcast makes it a lot easier and faster to get that information to help today's entrepreneurs and small business owners so you are talking with different uh, uh, category people and uh, trying to uh, uh, know their experiences and uh, trying to frame questions and uh, trying to get uh, as much as uh, information and trying to tell it to the audience and uh, you are connecting with a lot of audience so what is that unique quality that you have that is making uh, you things possible get a mentor if you're podcasting get a mentor if you want a podcast get a mentor if you're thinking about podcasting get a mentor i got a person who is a radio legend in southern california michael benner and he gave me tips information help on my voice my interview my show a lot of help and so you know you and i you and anybody you can figure it all out you can figure this outside but it takes you so long there's so many years it would take to learn all this but when you get a mentor you speed up that time and i got a uh, 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 the mentor to help me and coach me and guide me through a lot of what i've a, a lot of the show to make it the the success that it is today there's a lot of parts to it the mentor is one part you have to do the work but a mentor really helps speed it up and i've mentored people and helped them and my students have gone on to getting millions of downloads so i can understand you also give a uh, training to uh, people uh, to start their podcast and uh, uh, get success in their podcast yes i do i do mentoring and consulting for people that really want to to grow their podcast it takes it takes a couple months to really get per- people started or going or up to another level so it takes a little bit of time if you're serious about it then you'll you'll want to invest that time and we uh work for a couple hours a week and really really work it out and the other thing that i do which you could say is more economical is i do podcast marketing where i'll market the podcast i'll market your podcast or anybody's podcast and i have a very very large social media network i think it's close to 200,000 followers now and i'll market and market and market the podcast and bring a lot of engagement and i can get thousands and thousands of people to listen to anybody's podcast on a weekly basis this is this is what i do with my podcast marketing service and that really helps a lot it's a little more economical than than mentoring uh, or being a coach which you know 
But if you want the fa- it all depends also, Cy, on how fast you want to speed it up, do you want, and your budget. So if you want to go fast and you've got the budget, then I can mentor you. If you want to go fast but you don't have quite the budget, I can market your show. So I have got something for most people that really want to take their show up to another level. That's a that's a great thing. Uh, that is a great opportunity for uh, uh, beginners like us. Uh, so, how many people have uh, 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 subscribed uh, to your packages and uh, uh, and uh, growing with the help of you? Well, how many people is uh, is uh, you know private company information? But I have a number of clients that are customers that I take care of and it's working very well. Uh, in fact, if you go to Tony D U R S O dot com slash clicks, C L I C K S. That is the marketing service that I do for podcasters. And so just go to my, my domain and go to that URL or you'll see clicks at the top on the nav bar. And I explain it. How do I do it? What I do what kind of results you can get. It's I, I explain it pretty well. And that really will, um, you know, will, will tell you a lot. And my service is more of a um, boutique service. In other words, you know, to do what I do using my social media, it's not possible to have 7 billion customers. So I'm not going that big. But those that are serious, that really want to do it, I do have a, a number of clients been with me for years and years, and they just love the service. You are, yeah. uh, there you go. Yeah, so uh, if, uh, uh, any 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 broadcaster from any country can uh, uh, can uh, can take your service. Yes, if you're in India, you're in South India, you're in Punjab, in Gujarat, you're in Pakistan, South America, Indonesia, anywhere in the world, you can you can I can drive people to you. Now my social media is international, so when I bring people to your podcast, they're all over the world. There is a good number of people from the United States in my social media, but they're all over the world. So you get a nice mixture of people all over. And what's really good is, especially if you have sponsors or people that want to advertise with your podcast and they want you know, to see a lot of volume, I, I could be helpful in that. So uh, you are doing two uh, uh, too many jobs. So how you are handling this? One, uh, uh, your training and uh, your mentoring and uh, your podcasting, and uh, you also giving, uh, 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 I mean, promoting other 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 podcasters. So how this is uh, possible for you? It it is it's work. It's very much work. I have a team, and I have people that do do parts and pieces for me. I podcast myself every week, which is takes the most of my time. But I take care of all my customers and I see that everything is set up and then I have my team help with the finish it. But I see that everything I oversee, everything uh, that is and that it rolls out well and that it's good and it's work. But the one nice thing about being an entrepreneur side is that you control your own schedule to a degree. And when you get too much work going, you can, you know, take a piece of what you do and, and give it and hire someone to do it. So, so I'm able to grow by bringing on people that take care of things. You know, my, my web person, you know, just does everything for me. I, I, you know, and, my social media people, when they post, they know what to do. I've trained them all well. So I don't have to do everything. I just start it, get it off, and then I give it to to my uh, to my people, to my team. 
And that's really the backbone of a good business is having a good team to do work for you. And I've been growing and growing every year. You know, I thank God so much. I'm growing and growing. And, you know, I'm very, very pleased about that. So uh, uh, do you prepare for uh, for the interview that uh, for, for, for the guests uh, who come to your show? I can see uh, I, I listen uh, uh, a few of your podcasts. I, it is really interesting the way you are uh, asking questions and uh, uh, the the way they are. Uh, they're feeling very comfortable and they're feeling very uh, 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 free to share everything. Yes, my guests tell me all the time that it's the best interview they've ever had. And it's because I think I, I like to learn and I had I have a good mentor who taught me a lot. And I do prepare for each show. I go through the website. I go through the information and I get very curious about the guest and and I want to know so much about that guest so that when I do the show, when I do the interview, you, it comes out. You can tell I'm very curious. I've been on podcasters where you can tell the, the, the interviewer is not interested. You can tell they're like, they're just reading stuff. I, I get into it because I want to bring that knowledge to my audience. So I get very curious and I ask a lot of the questions because I want to know the answer. And because I want to know the answer, my audience uh, gets the benefit of all that. And I think that that's a, a good key method at, at having and running an, uh, a very good interview. So you started from zero. Now you, uh, uh, you are, uh, uh, your number is 18, 18 million plus. And uh, when you look back and uh, see at yourself, the difference between you when you were zero and uh, the, uh, the, the, the person who is doing right now, who is very successful, who is one of the top podcasters in the United States. So how do you feel? How do you uh, compare yourself with uh, that one and this one? Oh, I don't think about it because, well, by the way, commercial, commercial break last week, four or five days ago, we, we broke into 19 million total listens, views, and downloads, 19 million now over. I'm going to hit 20 million, maybe by the end of this year. So that was my commercial back to the interview. <laughs> we, um, I don't really look at it because what's there to look at? You know, it's like I started off when there was zero, when I didn't know anything. And my my attention, and this is very important, my attention is on the future. You know, I'm going to hit 20 million listens and uh, my show is growing and I'm, I'm on, you know, Roku, I'm nationally syndicated on radio. I'm on all the podcast platforms and I want to grow. I want to help more people. And I don't look at where I've been. I look always look at where I'm going and I want to help more people. And because I want to help more people, I've been helping to feed poor families. I've been helping to feed, it's really not a good word, families and just the children, especially the children in poverty areas that don't have government help or don't have what they don't have what they need. For example, we're helping feed a family in a part of the world. The um, The mother is very ill. She can't work. The oldest daughter is very ill. The younger daughter, there's two daughters, the younger daughter spends her life taking care of the mother and her older sister. There's no government aid, zero. They're starving. What do you do? I'm helping them. I'm helping them with my proceeds and I'm giving them and I'm feeding them. And uh, I've been doing this for four and a half years and we've been growing and growing and helping children in, in poverty areas and their families, uh, passing out food and supplies and tents and sleeping bags and socks and slippers and clothes and water and all these things. And just last week, 
we calculated that we have passed out over a hundred twenty thousand meals so far and that's just in about four four and a half years and so our new goal is we want to hit 200,000 meals next year. We want to double that. And uh, and I have a new a new uh, web page coming out on my site where I'm allowing people to donate because I just want to grow it. So I've done everything I can I, to a degree and I'm doing more and more that I can. But now I'm going to let more and more people help and donate for like twenty five dollars. It's like. I'm trying to remember, uh, no, for, I'm trying to think of what it is for like $50 or uh, I don't even remember the price. We could do like, give out like 25 meals. So it's not that bad. And we can feed people and feed families and help, help what we can, because there's a point side where when you're successful, you know, let me ask you this question. How much food can you eat? You know, there's only so much food you can eat, right? So, you know, I'm not trying to be a billionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire. I am not interested in being a billionaire. If God gives me a billion dollars, then God has a reason for it. But I'm not looking for a billion. I'm not like, you know, I'm not on, in that game. I I have enough to feed my family. I've got gas in my vehicles. We're happy. So let me help make other people happy. And that is my philosophy. Maybe there's a little Italian in there because my roots are Italian. I was born in Italy, but I just like to help people in that. I like to help people with my show and my podcast, but also I'm putting I'm putting uh, and passing out and bringing meals to people in poor areas. It started in California, by the way. And there's a long story on that, how it started, why it started. But now we're really rolling on it and it just it's a good feeling. So how do you feel uh, you are uh, you're contributing the world uh, in the form of uh, uh, interviewing people and edu uh, asking them questions and uh, uh, giving education uh, to millions of people and uh, and also you are uh, uh, helping financially and uh, in, and uh, and you're giving food and uh, you're also giving service other side and uh, you're also helping uh, uh, other podcasters uh, grow their uh, uh, grow their work. So how 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 you feel? Because uh, this is not something that is uh, usual. That not everybody can earn and uh, can achieve what you did. That is a really great question, and I'm not sure how to answer it. But I can say to be more more proper. It started, it just, it, life started growing with me from one thing to another and growing. And I realized as I was growing in my life as an entrepreneur that God has a reason for me. And I understand that reason, that purpose, that path, and that's to help others. And that this is what God wants me to do. And the more I connect with that, and understand that the more success I have, the more business, the more downloads, the more audience, the more everything happens and and the more people I help. So it's just growing now and growing. And it's because I realized that this is what God wants me to do. God, and, and, and I'm connected better with my purpose that God has for me because he created me. And I'm very, very appreciative. And he wants me to help his children. And I do it as best as I can. So what about your government? Uh, uh, how your government is uh, helping you or uh, uh, said about the work that you're doing? My government is not helping any of the work I'm doing at all. If that was the question, the government doesn't help at all. The government, the government is, uh, it takes actions you would think that are not helpful, that are not good. 
and it requires you to be very smart on figuring out a way to to deal with it because the government's putting rules, mandates, conditions, problems, and issues that make it harder and harder for people to survive. That's just the fact. Uh, that's just the way it, the way it is it, it, pretty much in the world. So you have to really think outside and deal with and figure out how are you going to make it happen, regardless of all this. You know, it's like, the diff, it, this is all part of the entrepreneur spirit. The entrepreneur is the person that doesn't give up. When something bad happens to an entrepreneur, I believe what should happen is you don't lay down. The entrepreneur, when he gets knocked down, he gets back up. Gets knocked down, he gets back up. Gets knocked down, gets backed up. That is the key to success as an entrepreneur. And when the government... Uh, issue some rule or law or whatever that affects the business, you have to figure out how can you be legal compl and compliant and still do what you do. And it's very, uh, it can be work. Like I had that business four times in seven years. We had major financial uh, uh, federal regulations and rules and protocols that changed how I did business. It was not good. It was just like the lockdown we had in 2020. It wasn't good. So I had to figure out a way around that. And that's why I went into podcasting because I can I can control that better. I can podcast anywhere in the world. So governments uh, don't always give uh, laws, rules that help us, the little people. They don't always work for us. They work for the people that have all the money. So uh, sometimes you're not lucky and the rules aren't good for you at all. So you've got to be very smart and figure out how can I deal with this? And there are ways to deal with it. And that's hopefully um, you'll learn that in my shows. We talk about that sometimes, but that's a tough one because the government takes actions that just really just don't, aren't helpful at all. So you're creating impact and uh, you're creating effect uh, with the, all the mediums that you have. And uh, where do you want to reach? What is your goal? What is your destination? Short goals are I want to pass out over I want to go over 200,000 meals passed out by the end of 2022 and I want to get to 1 million listeners per episode right now we're a couple hundred thousand every episode of mine gets a couple hundred thousand and I want to get that up to a million an episode it can be done and I will say again I'm focused on the future instead of the past so there's more to go for me, so I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. So, uh, uh, what kind of message, other than other than uh, uh, interviewing uh, people, what kind of message that you personally have in your heart that you want to send to every heart uh, uh, of uh, every human being on this planet? There are some key messages. I think that what I talked about earlier would be the message and that is there is a um, you everyone listening to this you were created you were created by god you are a child of god and we need to go back to god in the world by itself does not teach you that they teach you that they teach you lies in your media, in your news, in your magazines. All you get in, you get a lot of lies about God because you you hear about theories, you know, Sai, theories of spontaneous combustion and and uh, and things like that. But it's not true. You, deep down in your soul, in your heart, you know. God is there and that you were created by God. And if this is time for us 
to turn back to God. Now, when I say God, I'm I'm not I'm talking about the one true creator of all creation. I'll say that again. The one true creator of all creation. The reason I say that is because we hear God all of the time in different ways, good and bad, but they're not referring to the one true creator of all creation. Everything here was created by that incredible supreme being that we like to refer to as God, but, you know, some evil people have changed the wording, right? So the if and I know you, you want to hear about entrepreneur and, and social media and how to get a lot of people. But if you all focused and realized that there is God and he wants you to come back to him. And I was able to get that message across. I think it would be the biggest service that I could do to you and your audience. Yes, I can talk to you about social media hacks and interviewing hacks and podcasting hacks. And I'm happy to answer questions. It, it, it would be a class. There's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge there that I could share. And you'll be more successful if you have God in your life is probably the message I like to give to give everyone. And and I'm not trying to be religious and this and I'm not trying to talk about any particular religion because God is beyond religion. God is God. And you may not have expected that type of an answer, but you asked. It's your fault. You asked me the question. <laughs> so God gave you opportunity uh, to serve uh, uh, other other creatures. So you got that opportunity. Uh, so what is what is your inspiration? What is your motivation? What is your driving force? What makes you uh, uh, wake up in the morning and uh, do whatever you are doing? I don't know. I think it's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> my motivation is to help people to share the knowledge to share the wisdom to get people to realize that there is something bigger and greater because if you just chase money chase you know run after if you're just chasing money it's not rewarding it's not fulfilling look at all these celebrities that have millions and they're they have drug problems they have drinking problems they have relationship problems how can that be they have millions and millions and millions of dollars and they have all these problems and they're going to rehab and this and that and guess what they're not happy money is nothing money is is insignificant when you work for something more rewarding, the money comes to you. And I work to help others and to share my knowledge and to help feed children and their families and to connect people with God as best as I can. I do not talk about God on my show. It's not a religious show. I talk about how to grow your social media, how leadership, how to make your loyal uh, employees loyal, how to start a new business, how to get your project, all, all these things we talk about. We don't talk about God. So this is sort of like off air, in an off air type interview, because because when you ask me that question, the most rewarding thing for me is that I'm doing what I what I understand God wants me to do. And that gets me up in the morning. And as long as I'm doing what God wants, why God created me, I feel I am fulfilling my purpose. And that is such a good feeling. And the money comes, the money comes, the money comes, the money comes. I don't focus on the money. I don't count the money. I'm not money counting. No, the money just comes and comes and comes and comes. And then I just send out and send out and help kids and help feed families and help feed families. But that motivation, that purpose, that goal, that drive is doing what I believe God put me here for. And I'm very appreciative to God for that. Do you have any particular episode that you cannot forget? From which, uh, from which uh, you learned a lot and you taught uh, uh, the, the society and the world a lot? 
that's a tough one because I've done, I don't know what, 600 episodes in six years with many millionaires and billionaires. These are the people I interview, millionaires and billionaires. And I get their, their information on how they became successful at the top of their category. And every time I do an interview, it's always my best. And I've learned the most because I've already learned all these other things before because I have the guest on, I learn everything. And then the next week I have another guest on. So what's always the most fresh in my mind is my last interview, which is always my best interview. And I just keep growing and adding and growing and adding and growing and adding to the knowledge that I have. So my last interview is always the one that's most in my mind. And that show is coming out tomorrow. It is um, a deep dive in social media with Peter Montoya. It airs on Voice America at 2 p.m. Pacific. And it will be on my website, Tony, D-U-R-S-O.com, in a few days afterwards. And we talk about social media 1.0 with MySpace and 2.0 with Facebook and, and Twitter and 3.0 and what social media should be and how to work with social media, how to grow it. We, 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 we give some tips and some hacks. It's a really good show and because it was my last interview, it was my best interview, and it's the most freshest on my mind. And you'll all find that on my website in just a couple of days. So you're talking about different things. So do you uh, do you uh, personally have an uh, interest on uh, uh, learning about uh, new things and uh, trying to explore it and trying to tell it uh, how it works, how the things worked for them and what, what, how do you do research or uh, you just do because uh, everybody is interested? That's not a, there's not a perfect answer to that question. I, my focus is people at the top of their category that I call them an elite entrepreneur. These are people that made it in their field. You know, I, I know like a couple months ago, I interviewed somebody who has hundreds of millions of dollars from running and uh, a, a network marketing group and and running the company it's got hundreds of millions of dollars so he was at the, he's at the top of his category you could say and i am very curious about how they did it what their background is and i have found that almost every single guest never had it easy no, in other words their life wasn't handed to them. They had to work for what they got. They had to work for it. They had to think about it and they had to figure it out. And they, they had some adversity, some obstacles. And I learned from that. And I, so I focus on the key, on the person and their success. And in that focus, how they did what they did. And in that, we learn as an entrepreneur, we learn all sorts of little topics and sub subjects that help give us a more rounded, more knowledge base for our own business. And so it's always based on the person, but that person, because they're so key and successful, there's so much that they can teach us. And I, I'm very curious. Um, I, I, my research is, you know, very simple. I go through their book a little bit or their website and I read about them and I come up with questions like why this and why that and why this and how this and and I learned and it almost for you for everyone that podcasts you'll find this when you interview people which I think is the best you learn from them and it's like it's like getting free mentorship. In other words, I'm not charging you a thousand dollars an hour Sai for me to teach you stuff. I'm just giving it to you free. It's like, wow, this is great. So when you podcast, you give people to just teach you free. And it's like, this has helped you. I've seen your earlier shows. You're different. You're, you've improved because you've had early, because you've learned from the people that you've talked, spoken with, and it's giving you a greater and greater knowledge base to, to run and conduct better interviews. Don't you think? 
you are right but uh, uh, a person who is in this world and who is very superior uh, talking about me makes me feel very happy well it, it's true and so you know there is a um, there's a a bad word in the dictionary about podcasters because a majority of podcasters don't go past seven, eight, nine, ten episodes. It's called pod fade. We're seeing 75, 85 to 85 percent or so of podcasters from one year don't podcast again the next year. So it's, they drop off a lot. So so mo- so you can flip it around and say a min- most podcasters are not successful. A minority are successful and keep at it. And by following some of the things that I've just mentioned in this interview, you can improve your podcast and become better and better and beat those odds and 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 grow year after year. There's a lot to it. And learning from your guests is really, really key. I, you know, there are radio show hosts and that are very successful and all they do is they're the only one talking. I think that's a little hard for everyone. I think it's easier to interview people and have a, and have a, a, a better chance of having a successful show. That's just the way I look at it because you get mentored and you get you you learn and you grow because somebody's got to teach you. Somebody's got to help you grow. And so use your guests to help you grow your podcast. So you interviewed uh, very big people, very influential people and uh, people who earned a lot of money so what what you personally uh, uh, took from all those people whom you interviewed pushing 20 million down downloads and listens <laughs> i've learned so much it's it is a different world if i look at myself six years ago at to now it's a different world. It is a different world. There's no doubt about it. I've learned so much. And there's so much more to learn. I know a piece of of what there is to learn. I've I've scratched the surface, perhaps. There's so much more to go. I don't know it all. There's so much more to go. It's the more you go. The bigger the world is, the more there is to learn. So one good message to my audience who are watching and listening to our conversation. One good message. Well, what is what would you say are are the demographics of your audience? Do you know? Are, are you familiar or or who do you target? Yeah. Uh... I have most of my audience from U.S. A businessmen, people that work a job, uh, tech people. Do you know anything about your audience? Yeah, tech people. Tech people. Yeah. They, uh, the coders. They're, uh, they like to build websites. That that sort of audience. Yeah, because uh, I take most of my uh, interviews of. Uh, 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 tech people because I did a master's in software engineering and graduation in computer science and engineering and I I'll ask questions based on it and uh, I'll make a uh, I'll make it most of my interviews are uh, from uh, technical field well there's a lot I can say to that uh, my audience my world is a little bit different and but I can say that the world is right now supported by tech people everything we have our our phones our computers my camera my microphone it's all based upon what was created by a tech person so tech people are very valuable in what they're doing and i think that um that's helped move the world because it's not just one person coding or building something it's it's the aggregate total of all these people and all that knowledge that's really helped create a lot. And the amount of applications and technology is it's astounding. And if I would say anything, 
at all. I would say just to be real in what you're doing and realize, hopefully, that you're you have a purpose at the end. You're not just coding for a job, but you have this purpose that you're doing something. It's actually going to help people and not not something that's going to take people's freedoms away or hurt people or harm people. If if you could work and see that there's a better a good end goal for what you do in your tech world, that would be great. You know, there's some people that use their tech, unfortunately, their technical expertise to hurt other people, to to do tricks, to to do viruses, to do uh, spyware and all this stupid stuff. And you're so smart and you've got this use your intelligence to do something good. It's more rewarding because. It's like. If somebody is starving and you give them you know, you give him a, a meal, which is great. But if they can learn, they'll learn, they'll be better off if you teach them how to, to get more meals and how to do better themselves. So there has to be a balance. You have a job, you're paid to do something, but but always keep in mind that there's other people here and we want good technology. We want technology that helps people and makes it easier because right now some technology has gone worse and worse and worse. I'm going to explain that. I tried to turn on the flashlight on my phone last night. Doesn't sound hard? Does it sound hard, Cy? Turn on the flash. It wouldn't turn on. Lights were going, it's blinking, it's flashing, it's doing this, it's doing that. I just want the flashlight. Guess what? I had to sit there and study it and, you know, I'm joking now, do a YouTube class and it was like, I just want to turn the flashlight on. So I couldn't, it, it wouldn't, it, I couldn't do it because it was doing all these silly things. I just want a flashlight. It was too much tech. It was all this stuff. It was just too much. So I deleted it from my phone. And guess what? My phone says it's not allowed to be deleted. So now it's sitting there. So, so I go on to the, the store to buy a flashlight that just you push the button and it turns on the flashlight on your phone. I mean, that's simple. Guess what? It doesn't exist. They all have lights and colors and flashing and this color and this flash and SOS code and, and blinking fast and blinking slow and all these things. And the free one, I found the free one and then they're just throwing advertisements at you. I just want a flashlight. So. So what I think is the tech has gone a little, and there's, I have many more examples, many, but I think the technology has gone over and above what's useful. And so I say to you tech people, try to be, try to do something that's, that, and I know you're being paid to create what you create, but we want the world to be useful and not spend time. I mean, I have some applications that take so much time to operate i just do it the old-fashioned way and save time so don't go too much just always keep in mind that goal of trying to help others because i i think what you do in technical world is the whole world runs on it but we don't want to spend perhaps people spend their lives just trying to figure out and operate something because it's supposed to help us and and i'm and uh, i just wanted to just say that not as a bad thing but just there's an end goal there's a purpose and realize that hopefully that you'll realize why you're here and that god put you here for a reason and you know i would love to see some really good technical uh, applications out there that are are like Apple was 10 years ago. Apple was intuitive. Today, it's crazy. You know, back then it was just, oh, it was just so obvious you push this button to get this result. Today, it's all different now. And every time there's a new update on smartphone, on Apple, on the computer or whatever, all these um, applications are activated that you don't know are activated, which and then you have to find out that they're there six months later and that they're not good for you. And then you have to figure out how to remove them only to figure out that they can't be removed. So, so 
work with a good purpose to help people would be really, really good. That would be great. You know, and I know you've, you're getting paid for it and you've got to make your money and all that, but just try to work towards that goal because we'll appreciate it down the line because it's getting crazy right now, as I've mentioned, and who knows how much crazier it will get in the years to come. So hopefully you'll come up with some simple, you know, you know, do you know the wheel on a car? It's simple. It, it doesn't need much more. So when you got it simple, you're good. <laughs> I hope I hope that's a good message. So what do you say about my audience about the work that you're doing? Uh, how uh, they can improve them, uh, their podcast and uh, uh, by taking your service and uh, and uh, how to start and all uh, how uh, uh, they have to use your service. Well, if you want to grow your podcast, if you want to get a lot of people to your website, you want to grow your Instagram, your Twitter, you want to grow LinkedIn, you want to get a lot of YouTube views. You know, go to my domain, Tony, D-U-R-S-O dot com slash clicks, C-L-I-C-K-S, and read about my services and see if that can help you and, and reach out to me. You know, there's a message box there and see if I can help you with growing your podcast or, you know, growing your social media or so forth. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see how I can help you. And everyone's got a different scenario or what you may need help on. So feel free to reach out to me. I am approachable. And uh, sometimes it may take time to get to all my messages. I get a lot, but uh, I will answer them. So uh, I'll put your website link on the, uh, on the on the screen. People who find the video on YouTube can see uh, uh, your link and uh, can can see the work that you're doing and can can join uh, 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 in the uh, in the in the service that you're doing. That would be great. Yes. And yeah, put it in the show notes if you can. That would be great. Yeah. Also, I'll put in the description. Perfect. I appreciate that very much. I really do. I appreciate that, Sai. I thank you. So at last, uh, as a as a successful podcaster uh, in United States and uh, and a person who interviewed uh, millionaires, what do you say about my videos and my work? I've, as I've said earlier, there's a good improvement. I, you know, you keep improving, which is what's important. I keep improving. My shows, my interviews from last year are, I think they're so much better now because I keep improving and you've improved quite a bit. So you're doing very well. So keep interviewing good people and growing and learning. I think that's what it's all about. And it's what, it's what gets you out of bed in the morning too. <laughs> Yes, sir. So uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me your valuable time and uh, spending your valuable words on my show. It is my honor and pleasure. Thank you for thank you for the interview. I appreciate it. I appreciate being on show and uh, I hope this does really well for you in your career. Can I put this video on my YouTube channel with your permission? Absolutely. Uh, and also, can I put this uh, video and audio clip on my podcast, website, internet, social media, everywhere with your permission? Put it everywhere. I insist. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. I want uh, uh, I want uh, a lot of people in the world to get affected because of the positive energy that you are spreading uh, through all the platforms that you have. And I'm sure uh, uh, because of your uh, presence, this planet is going to uh, gain a lot. I, I hope so. That's that's what I'm working towards. That would make me very happy. And God. <laughs> to Indians, do you want to say anything? Namaste. Abkesehe. Sasrikalji. I know a little Punjabi. My wife is Punjabi. And I know a little Hindi. Some of my good friends are, are from uh, speak Hindi. And some are Gujarat, but I don't know any Gujarat. Um, everywhere is good good people. Uh, I want to say that the um, the Sikhs have had a major victory recently in the in uh, over Modi, the in the government of India. Um, and they've really taken a strong stand to help the farmers and to help the produce and the food. And because what was going to happen was going to totally 
hurt the food supply very seriously in India. And uh, if you're not aware of it, find out about it. But the Sikhs have really helped change the face of India by preventing really bad things from happening. If you don't know about it, find out and give thanks to the Sikhs and be grateful to them because they, uh, India was going to plummet really fast um, in, in bad times if, if Modi's uh, laws and protocols were to take effect. And it got reversed. He said he would reverse it and he started reversing it. So that's really positive. So when you see someone from Punjab or a Sikh, thank them because it's the Sikhs that help change uh, these bad laws from taking effect. Awesome. So thank you, Tony, for giving me opportunity again and uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing and uh, uh, keep inspiring uh, a lot of people in the world like this. Thank you. It was a, it was a lot of fun and I am appreciative to be on your show. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye. Bye bye.